Hi everyone, Sean here from the Sci-Fi Model Guy and welcome to the final chapter of the USS Rio Grande build from AMT. This is a 172 scale build and we're doing the final reveal here. So you may notice right there behind me there's a little extra blue glow. That's actually the ship. I'm re-recording this intro because uh, in doing the nighttime uh, reveal here and talking about it, I noticed a good number of light leaks coming on this kit that I didn't notice before. Now, uh, it might have just been me not seeing it very well not checking some things or just being be, being in a bit of a rush. So I just want to apologize to everyone. I do see them and they are things I probably can correct even now, uh, but I'm probably just not going to. Again, I've said in a couple times in this video, this kid's just for me. She's sitting back there. I know I can do better. So uh, I was just anxious to get this kit out and done. So uh, kind of a spoiler alert, fair warning. This one's not perfect, okay? Um, now, th these things I could correct. They wouldn't have been hard to do. Uh, some of the seam lines uh, I did were a little bit chunky. And then when I turned off the lights to do the cool nighttime reveal that we do, I noticed that there were some light leaks there that popped out that I just didn't notice before. So uh, I do mention it in the reveal video, but I want to call it out here. Um, is If you're lighting your stuff, um, one of the things I just learned, and I probably just should have known this before. Uh, what you see with your naked eye isn't everything. So I caught a lot of the stuff by using the camera, the one that's recording me right now. It picks up a lot of these subtle little light leaks and light spots that the human eye just can't uh, can't pick up. So what I'm going to be doing in the future, again, uh, I don't hide the mistakes here. And, and the big thing on this channel is learning. I'm learning just as much as you are. I've got a lot of things to learn about. So the big takeaway here, what I'm saying on this video is if you're lighting your video, lighting your models here, uh, I do recommend going, turning off the lights to a nice low level and using your phone. If you have a nice camera on your phone or a webcam or some like good high quality pixel camera, uh, go ahead and use that and pan around and look for the light leaks on the screen. Just record and go around and then go back and look at it. I would have caught a bunch of, of little light spots and light leaks that I didn't catch. Now, thankfully, they're far more apparent on the screen. What you're going to see is a lot more than what the naked eye sees. So, you know, when I have the normal lighting, like what's behind me right there, uh, I really don't see it. So I don't really care. And again, I'm not giving this kit to anybody. If I were, I would go back right now. I wouldn't even be recording this, this intro and I'd be fixing them. They're fixable things. Um, but, you know, again, I just want to move on. I want to get to the Enterprise D, uh, which is what we're doing next. And I've already recorded the uh, intro video for that, the unboxing. And that's going to be ready to go next week. So that's it, everyone. I just wanted to re-record the video and and kind of disclose that you're going to see some little light spots and light leaks. It's not the most perfect reveal that we've ever done, like the the six or the 350 scale Enterprise, which I thought was really nice. There weren't any apparent errors. But anyway, again, learning channel and all that good stuff. So um, I want to thank everyone here uh, for sticking with me and sticking on the channel. We are at 979 subscribers right now. Uh, we need 21. 21 more of you. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit uh, enter hashtag enterprise in the comments on this video or any other video, and I will capture those. It was, I'll capture one per person. So if you've done it like five times, uh, it's still one entry per person. Uh, and uh, we will get you rolled in to win a 650 scale enterprise, a nice 18 inch built to your specifications, specifications lit and everything with a nav board and mailed out to you. And that's going to be the giveaway we're doing on this channel. Now you don't have to subscribe to uh, to get that win, but uh, it does help if we get that subscription over a thousand and have it stick for a couple of weeks, we'll go ahead and start that build. So really looking forward to building that one and celebrating with everyone. And that's it, everyone. Uh, the last thing I just want to say is, um, is again, to, uh, to all of you who uh, knew or watched Boyd Crompton from Trekworks, who passed away a few weeks ago, and that really kind of shook up the community. I saw a bunch of tribute videos to him, and I just kind of put my thoughts out on a little video, and uh, Boyd's wife was kind enough to put a little comment in on that video. So uh, if you're watching out there, if his family, I really appreciate it. And I hope you all are doing okay. And I rest assured that we are going to keep Boyd's memory alive. We, he won't be forgotten. And uh, so much of him is with the techniques I and others use. 
And we were just, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing him with us. So we really, really appreciate it. So, all right, everyone, we will see you down the road. Enjoy the final reveal. Hey, everyone. Okay, so the main painting is all done. I've got some mask over here uh, to cover for painting the front of the ship here. There's like a sand color. We've got to paint this. But um, it, while we're waiting for the masking to dry there, uh, I thought it would be a good time to do some of the damage effects that we're going to be doing. So again, you know, the ship has gone through some 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 fights and some skirmishes, and uh, we just want to show some of the damage being done. So uh, we've got the Dremel tool here, and we've just got this little grinding bit on there. You could probably use any grinding bit that you've got. Uh, this one here has just got this kind of a rough uh, texture to it. And so I thought that would be good. And it's working out pretty well. So I'm just going to do a couple of these here the way I've been doing, just as an example, uh, just so you can see what, we're, what we've got going on here. So I think I'll put one right about here. And uh, what you want to think about is, is the, uh, the direction of a, of a particle beam weapon, a, a phaser or a disruptor beam or something. So here I'm just kind of letting it bounce around a little bit, get a little bit random. Some, some parts are thicker than others, some are deeper. There we go. So hopefully you were able to hear that. I'm going to have to check the audio. So yeah, we can see here we'll zoom in. And it's just kind of random, random pot marks and damage. I'm just going to go over that with, whoop, the focus was going weird. Uh, I'm just going to go over that with some black and some some of this oil, uh, steely oil that we have for uh, from uh, Model Color, which is right here. This stuff works really, really well. It's oily steel. And when that dries, it has this nice uh, kind, of, uh, kind of an effect of, swirling around like i don't know if you've ever seen oil in water or something it kind of gets like a little rainbow effect so we kind of get that going there too so uh i do need to be careful here on where i'm choosing to do this damage uh i don't want to put any on the nacelles real right now because that would eat through the plastic and remember we've got lights in there so we risk uh, getting a light leak and i don't want to have to worry about that poking a hole through there and dealing with that so um you know, we'll be able to do the effect. I'm sure it would be fine. Uh, I, even like right here, I could do uh, some damage. But we again, we've got six LED lights in there uh, that, um, you know, if we do it too thin, uh, there is a risk of some light leaking through or a light spot. I, like again, it probably would be fine. I just don't want to really take the risk. I'm putting damage in enough areas of the ship here. Um, we've got some here on the bottom. So there's like a nice... Uh, nice thing so again you want to think of you know as the ship's flying around it's going to be hit from different angles and um different different impacts so here's one where it's like a glancing blow or maybe it came uh, this way and maybe a few shots there so there's that trajectory over here is like a smaller one like it just got clipped uh, maybe just a shorter burst uh here's another one that's kind of like a long prolonged uh, phaser blast and then some others here, just kind of random. Another another one there. And all together, it just kind of comes out nice. Now, one of the tricks you want to do is just let your hand bounce around. You want to think about a general direction with these things. But uh, you don't be afraid to let your hand bounce around or let the tool kind of take you on a little adventure. Uh, so here's one here. This would have been really scary for the crew, right? You know, coming right there, uh, right up toward that, that window. That would have been a nice scary shot, so I thought that would be kind of a cool place to put this. Um, got one here, I think. I don't know if I showed this one. There, Yeah, there's one there. Again, we've got some lights up here in the sensor array that I didn't want to risk uh, doing that. And uh, we've got one there. And maybe we'll, do, maybe we'll do one right here. So let's do one. Maybe we'll, we'll really mess up this... Uh, 
this stuff here. And don't be afraid to uh, ruin parts of it. So there's a good one. Uh, and another thing here is you don't want to always uh, chip away any of this excess. So here, when I did that, there's a lot of uh, spare plastic, or not spare, but a lot of plastic came off of this because it kind of melts when you do this. Uh, don't don't always chip that away because, you know, metal would, uh, you know, melt and contort and twist and, and stuff. So you get some nice effects with it uh, if you just leave it like this. Let that natural damage uh, do something. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe we can put another one right here. How about I zoom out so you can see? So we'll do. Looks like I got something on there. So yeah, there's um, something. Maybe I can scrape this off. Don't know what this is. Maybe a little bit of glue. Not so sure. I have to leave it though. It's going to have to be there and be what it is. So, yeah, so right here uh, we got a little some more contorted metal, some stuff. So when we put that little oil, steely oil stuff here, I'll put some on now. And I've just shaken this up. And we're going to, let's zoom in here. Come on out. There we go. So I'm just going to coat this around just with this thing. I don't even need a brush as long as you don't squeeze too hard. There we go. It did come out a little bit thick, so we'll, we'll spread that out with the brush. Don't always need it, but, you know, we'll use it there. Okay, so that gives us this nice steel kind of bare metal look. And then what we'll do is we'll come back over this with some black in the middle there, like real scorched. And then I might even load up the airbrush with some black and just get just around here. And we'll do some more streaks and stuff with black uh, in the airbrush later on just to finish it off. So let's put a little bit of steely oil there. Or oily steel, whatever it is. <laughs> so we'll get that in there. And again, that's just the base for this. That's the base color. You, you definitely want to do a few, a few different colors of this stuff to get some uh, some different textures and different looks there. But uh, yes, yeah, that's pretty much. Pretty much it. So uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll we'll do some uh, some video of the. Uh, gosh, I'm not even. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Sorry about that. I wasn't even zoomed in. I'll probably edit that last bit out. So yeah, um, yeah, that's it. You know, you just want to do multiple colors. You know, some grays, some of this oily steel, maybe some aluminum in there, and um, and you just want to. Uh, make sure you get a few different colors in there because different things that happen. And then we'll get, of course, like we said, we'll get the airbrush in and we will 
Oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this because I have to I have to paint this tan. <laughs> Let that dry overnight. No, um, um, actually, no, we'll wipe some of it off here. That was a silly thing. Got ahead of myself there. Anyway, so yeah, I've got this masked off, and then this white spot is a liquid mask. So I'm just waiting for that to dry, and then in here is going to be a, a sprayed painted uh, sand color. So, okay, well, that is it for this bit here. Okay, here we are with the final reveal. So uh, it took a little bit of time to get this one done. I was out of town for a couple of weeks. So the model has been done, but uh, the base had not yet been completed. So really proud of this one here. Um, I'll start down here with the base. Now, uh, down here what you see, it, you can tell it's the Star Trek insignia. And this is the base, uh, I think it's from a USS Reliant uh, build, I believe. It may have been from something else, maybe even this ship. I can't even remember at this point. Um, I'll have to go back and look. I really don't remember, but uh, I do know I had one of these laying around. Um, so I just spray painted this with a gold. Now, this is a um, Rust-Oleum uh, gold that I picked up at a Walmart. And then the silver here is a mica silver Tamiya spray paint. And I, all I did was just sand it down a little bit, prime it, and and then uh, went ahead and painted it. However, in the middle here, the, there was the original hole for the stand. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I went with a tripod kind of effect because the ship is, is kind of off balance, off centered, it's very heavy back here and not so much here. And I just wanted to make sure that, that she stood sturdy. And the other cool thing of doing the tripod is, if you can tell, uh, she's tilted. You know, it looks like she's kind of lifting off and there's a little bit of an angle to her. Uh, that is intentional. Uh, so that, that one I'm pretty proud of, of, of thinking of that. I really like that. Uh, and it allowed me to kind of manipulate it. So um, I didn't record any of the, of the thing here, but uh, I'll just run through this real quick. This here is just a... a basic wooden disc i picked this up at hobby lobby you can get them at like a pack of four and it's just a real thin balsa wood or uh, plywood very very thin stuff sanded it down gave it a little bit of a wood preparation stuff um it's like wood treatment to get stains to go on equally and then i just put a a, a stain on there i don't it's like a cherry stain or something um and then down here uh if you can if i can lift that that's just a uh, some pieces of wood there that I had laying around some poplar p-o-p-l-a-r poplar wood I think as you can tell I didn't stain underneath here um, that was just uh, four pieces I cobbled together cut them made sure they were even and then just this real cheap uh, you know quarter inch or maybe even eighth inch I don't know um, just like thin plywood I, this is all scrap wood guys that I used to put this together I'm not much of a woodworker so I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I did that, but um, just essentially what I did. And then there's, of course, the switch uh, for the power that we will turn on in a few seconds here. And um, so, and then underneath, I just drilled the holes for the uh, these tubes here. Only and only the power is going through, I believe, back here on this one. So I did end up having to drill through the wood here. You can see it's really dark, and I apologize for that. Maybe I can turn the, there we go. Um, there's a, a little bit of a hole there that I drilled there and there. Um, one of them I did a little too big, but it's hard to see. Um, and then I just put one in the center. Now I did kind of goof. It's not right directly in the center, uh, but that's okay. You know, no big deal. <laughs> um, just, I was so in so much in a hurry to finish this thing. I didn't line, bother to line it up properly. So that's on me I, I probably could have done a better job but uh anyway i i think she looks pretty cool so um yeah we've got the uh got the switch down there and then the plug is back here right there that's where she's coming out there so that's a nice little stand um very cheaply made scrap wood uh these i had from another project i had done uh, a pack of four of these was about seven or eight dollars and then just some poplar wood down there um now let's talk about the ship. So uh, we did talk a lot before. Uh, I did use the Dremel tool, so we made some damage on the ship here. Uh, just kind of scraped it up randomly like she'd been shot, gone through the atmosphere maybe a little bit, 
uh, down here. I'm gonna have to turn this upside. There you go. You can see all that all that charring underneath there. That would be from. Um, I don't want to lift it up too much because it'll come out of the wood. Um, but you can kind of see the uh, the effect there. Maybe I can do that. Give me one. Second. I'm gonna pause the video here and get a flashlight. There we go. Okay, I've got a flashlight on showing you the underneath. So there's a decal there, and then I put this nice scarring effect uh, and really charred. Uh, like it was from re-entering the atmosphere or going through a planetary atmosphere to avoid crashing. Um, I'll turn off that flashlight. Just various little bumps and bruises on there. Like I said, I've done so many Starfleet ships with the exception of the Constellation that we did uh, for Admiral Teague. Uh, and if you aren't subscribed to Admiral Teague, go ahead and subscribe to him. Um, that I hadn't really done any Starfleet ships with any damage. Uh, you know, we're always used to seeing Starfleet stuff real pristine and nice and everything. So here's some more, you know, just Dremel. And then we use the oily steel from uh, Model Color, which is right here. This is a, this is a really good uh, paint. You just do this oily steel with some black. And you can just kind of squirt it right out of the bottle on stuff. And it, it's really good for showing some damage. It's... It's kind of um, swirly in its colors. It's not very consistent as far as, um, you know, it's not flat black or straight black. It has some variation in there. And if you zoom in, you may be able to see some of that. I don't know. Um, and it gives a kind of a little glossy effect. Now back here, there's some more damage. Looks like it was a real big hit there or two big hits. This one is straight on. And this one is kind of like a, a glancing blow. I, I tried to make most of them like this because you'd imagine the ship's going to be doing some evasive maneuvers trying to get away from whatever's coming after it. And uh, that's it. Now, I did have a comment in one of the, in one of the videos about um, lighting the cockpit here. Uh, that's just not really possible. The inside of here is, is hollow. So if you're going to light up this cockpit, you'd have to build the innards of the ship and i just didn't have that kind of time or knowledge uh this is just going to be a uh, going to be a background piece for me um and so with that i will get to another uh thing here that i let go i just didn't didn't bother to do it which is these seam lines you can see there i'll turn on the flashlight again oh uh, you can kind of see it so right there where the where the nacelle meets that's better without the flashlight right there there's a pretty chunky seam line and there's another one here that's really apparent uh i was just lazy you guys i just didn't didn't want to do it i was wanting to finish the ship and i'm not giving this away to anyone uh but trust me if i were giving this away i would have taken care of that that is just real chunky um and you know i'd already put the, the cells together and you know, it's just one of those things where you just like, I'm going to just move on, let it go. <laughs> uh, the rest of the ship looks really cool, though. Uh, and as far as like right here, this is a seam line, of course. But, you know, in my mind, when we're talking seam lines, um, they, uh, they have to make sense. Like right here, it would make sense to me that when they assembled the ship, they would do in pieces, you know, bottom part of the hull, the top part of the hull, and bring them together. So uh, seeing seam lines in some things isn't really a big deal, you know, like uh, for here, for instance, you got these wings, these uh, warp engine struts, these nacelles. You would picture if they did want to upgrade the warp engines, these would be detachable pretty easily. So it makes sense to me that sometimes you would see seam lines, and especially even here. This is a uh, optional sensor array. You can put weapons things up here. Um, uh, sensors, you know, according to the to the verbs, the verbiage in the instructions. This is optional. So the runabouts were supposed to be uh, be able to be modified quite heavily. So anyway, um, yeah, that's really the only parts there that the seam. Let's see, uh, right there, it's pretty bad. I would. I mean, this is bad work. Just flat out, it's bad. It's not good. Um, you know, I just, maybe I should have done it, but if for whatever reason, I didn't. I can always go back and kind of sand that down if I want to, but I probably won't. Like I said, it's just a for me piece, just to kind of sit back there and look cool. <laughs> so anyway, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and turn on the lights. Because that's really the, the nice part. There we go. 
so there's the lights on in a minute here i'll turn down the lights in the shop and so we get a nicer you know kind of nighttime view uh, but it's really cool i like how the hull reflects the light from the nacelles it was kind of a cool touch and we'll see more of that when i turn down the lights you can see some of the yellow right here from the these uh manifolds the uh, impulse engine manifolds taking in the light the nacelles came out pretty good um i i have changed my mind i am going to go with a spray now i did try to airbrush these uh, after i installed them i'm just going to go ahead and use a spray now i found some tamiya translucent blue and some tamiya translucent red in spray paint form i have the clear blue and the clear red that i've been using with the airbrush uh, but the thing is, oh, that doesn't quite get uniform. So what I'm going to do is pre-spray. What happened here? Something. Oh, well, they uh, went through the big hole. That's okay. Yeah, when that happens, it just gets more of a tilt and actually kind of looks cooler. Um, where was I? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Tamiya clear red and the clear blue, they seem to just stay wet a little too long for my liking. So I found this translucent red and blue. And I'm going to be giving that a shot on the Enterprise D build, which is what we're doing next. If you are a subscriber, you would have seen the community post there. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to do the Enterprise D build. So up here, of course, is the cool sensor array. Uh, and if you missed it, these here are some little fiber optic wiring or fiber optic light cable that I put in there and painted the tips of them these various colors and they're not touching any lights but there's a strip of, of three leds bright white leds shining straight out here and that is illuminating these fiber optics and i did the thing called the mushroom technique if you go back i think it's to chapter two of this uh, series you'll see how i did that with a lighter it's pretty easy but it's it's a really cool effect uh over here so this is um to me a clear yellow that we uh, painted there and for this there is a strip of three leds shining forward and there's a strip of three leds shining behind for the impulse engines uh, then uh, after these were painted yellow i went through with some black on the airbrush and just gave it a little bit of a dust over it was a little bit too bright and then plus it added a little dirt and a little um you know damage and wear and tear there uh to make it look more more real i think um all of the uh, panel line, these little varied uh, panels here, like there's some, some different colors. I think this is XF-12 that I used. And this is the light blue, of course, that I like for the later Starfleet ships. Uh, this was all done by hand. I just used a brush and just painted over, and that came out really nice. I didn't have to do really serious masking or anything. It really came out pretty clear. Even when I zoom in, you don't really see any brush strokes. So I'm getting a lot better at brushing brush work. Uh, right here is some more by hand, a little copper. Some silver stuff there, or aluminum, aluminum, or aluminium for those across the pond. Uh, up here, just some more details, just some more aluminum paint, and I just kind of went random. I didn't go by the guide uh, or the instructions, or the paint guide. I just winged it, kind of painted what I thought looked cool. Uh, this is a darker gray. Again, that's by hand. Um, and the windows here were painted black from the inside. Let's see here, we're going around. A little bit more dark gray there. And the, de the decals, by the way, if you recall, or if you didn't watch the uh, unboxing video, the decals I ordered from HDA Model Works. They are uh, really good. And um, I, d I wasn't trusting the, uh, the decals that came with the kit because it was from 1995 and it probably would just disintegrate as soon as I got them wet. So thankfully HDA, HDA model works has replacement decals available and it was, I think $20. If I'm not, if, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but uh, go ahead and check that out. Um, anyway. Okay. I'm going to put the camera down here. We're going to turn the lights down here in the shop and give it a couple more passes and then we'll call this one uh, completed. So be right back okay here we are and we are in low light mode and as you can see here we've got some really cool reflections happening with the ship and i am really thrilled about that 
And part of the reason for this is, well, part of the reason for the reflections <laughs> is because we put the Duplicolor Matte Spray. And I do just need to go back and do one more coat to get it over the decals. But as you can see here, um, at night it looks so cool with all these colors going on. We've got like here, we'll get to a cool angle. There we are with the nice reflections. There, there's another one with a red, yellow, and blue all happening right there. Those are kind of common Star Trek colors too. Like if you look at the movie posters, uh, they all have that. There's the sensor array even giving a little reflection down here. And we've got the port and starboard lights here, the green there and the red over there. A couple of minor light leaks that I can see with the naked eye. You can't see them probably on the video, but I see just a couple. They're very minor. Um, again, the airbrushing on here. What if I go really close here? Maybe you'll see that. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see some inconsistencies here uh, with the, the cell. So right there is a little bit there. So I really think that Tamiya spray paint is going to be the good answer to that. I'll do a lot of light coats with it so we get uh, really even coverage. And I will do those before we install them. We'll see how that turns out on the old Enterprise. Oh, uh, back here there, you can see the red there. So we, those are the impulse engines. Those are illuminated by a strip of three of white LEDs. They're not really apparent. I probably should have dug out the plastic a little bit more. Uh, but uh, it, it is what it is. You can still tell that they're there and they, uh, they look nice. Oh, and then uh, right up here, we've got two small uh, LEDs. Or not LEDs. These are, again, this fiber optic stuff. And now, this is supposed to be red. Uh, they look kind of white on the camera, but they are indeed red. Uh, it's just the camera's picking it up a little differently than what the old eye sees. So, so there we go, everyone. Um, really thrilled with this one. I, I like the way it looks. I was pretty happy with the stand. Uh, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, even though I could have done a little bit better job on that. There, you know, I could have put stain on the outside. Uh, again, this is a personal project just for me. It's just meant to look cool. It's going to go on the mantle behind me. So in future videos, you will see this runabout lit up. So we're going to add a little bit more lights to the background there. But um, overall, really cool. And so, oh, we got a little light leak there. Look at that. I never noticed that. And it's because I can't see it with my eye. The camera's picking this up. Look at that. Hmm. And we got a little bit there too. Oh my. There now I do not see this with my naked eye as much as I do on the camera. I mean it is really illuminating. It's barely visible to me looking at it. But um yeah, it's really strange what the cameras will pick up and what they don't. So here's some more. That's really apparent here on screen. I'm I really don't see it <laughs> in the naked eye, which is uh, really interesting. I probably should use the camera to check for light leaks before uh, I finish and close up a, a kit. So I'll try to keep that in mind. It's a little tip there <laughs> that I just learned. You know, use use a camera that can pick up light your eye can't see to really make sure you get all your light leaks. And then you won't have any. But uh, anyway, yeah, overall, uh, pretty cool. I learned some stuff here. Um, let a couple little things go like the uh the you know the, the seam lines there that we talked about and probably if i would have fixed those seam lines uh those light leaks wouldn't even be there so you know lesson learned i suppose um what else did we learn uh oh and then uh the nacelle the thing so again i'm going to see how that spray paint works and try to forego using the clear blue and the clear red uh even though the basard collectors did come out pretty nice I will say th these are a nice nice red they're a lot more white showing here on the camera but um, overall fun build if you can find this kit I really recommend building it it was not that hard whoop sorry a little edit there I, I flipped the camera to my face um, where was I uh, yeah not that hard to build this one very few pieces a little bit of a challenge to get the little sensor array thing on there but um, and, and the lighting, uh, the, the wiring was a little bit of a challenge to get down into the thing. Oh, and there's a little teeny light leak. That's where the wires are going in. Uh, again, it's kind of hidden. 
Again, this is not a, a competition kit. <laughs> a little bit more there that the camera's picking up. I really don't see this stuff with a naked eye, you guys. So low light level, you're going to see a lot more than, than what you do with the li lights are on. So anyway, okay, we're going to stop talking about it. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this build. Uh, I certainly did. really like the, um, the, the bottom there. And we have some cool little solutions to illuminate the uh, sensor array there and did some fun stuff. So uh, if you can find this kit, definitely grab it if it's not going to set you back too much. And you should have a good time building it. And with that, everyone, we will see you a week from now. And we will be uh, doing the Enterprise D 1400 scale build, which I did record the unboxing to that the other day. So we're, we're ready to go and uh, get moving on that. Here's a nice little forward and under shot to, to leave. And in memory of Boyd Crompton, everyone, I'll just say it this once. Happy modeling, everyone. See you down the road.